Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Extreme Performance Series video blogs. Today, I have uh, one of my good friends, Valentin, here with us to talk about uh, an interesting topic. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Valentin. Uh, I'm a customer sustainability architect in the office of the CTO, um, but I've been doing performance for most of my life here at VMware, which is basically the last 15 years. So I hope I can um, still talk about something that interests you too, plus has sustainability benefits down the road. Yeah, so I understand we're going to talk about uh, kind of efficient performance and the power settings that are involved with that. Yes, efficient, but also de-risked. Whenever you talk about efficiency, whenever you talk about um, saving energy, it always feels like there is the subtone of, oh, but it might impact performance, right? So I'm arguing that for 99% of workloads, you can have your cake and eat it too. Um, and how that is possible, because some people had bad experiences, is what I, I try to explain here, um, why you can retain full control, yet still get some of the benefits of host power management. Awesome. So do you have some slides you're going to share with us to help us along this talk? I do indeed. Um, I'll cut them down so this is going to be short and snappy. OK, I hope every one of you is familiar with this screen here. This is where you edit the power policy settings of ESXi. So here you set what power policy you actually run at. And just a quick refresher, a power policy is really just different values across the same set of options. This is what it looks like for ESXi. So there's a couple of advanced options, and depending on the policy you choose, we use these differently. Now, the most important part is that ESXi relies on the hardware to present certain capabilities. It cannot just do some of these things without the hardware saying it's okay to do them. Um, the hardware itself, now this, for example, a Dell host here, has a ton of settings. You can configure different policies like performance, like dynamic, like OS control, or any other settings or any other name that these policies might have across vendors. And there's a lot of different options in them. The very important part is that ESXi really only controls three, and that is P states, legacy P states, C states, deep C states to be precise, and the Intel performance bias. So that is what ESXi can control live. This is what you can change at any second, how ESXi interacts with these technologies or uses them. What does that mean? Well, the guest doesn't really know anything about power management. It just knows that it doesn't need to run anything. It idles, it deschedules, basically just descheduled by the VM kernel. ESXi controls P states, deep C states. And for that, you need to set particular settings, right? For example, for P state, um, it's OS DBPM, demand-based power management. Um, now, this is often called OS control, but here OS control just means that the OS can control which P state to run, which sometimes is mixed up with the bias profile name OS control, which might be also setting this to OS control, but many other settings. For example, it will enable um, the ability to do deep C states, often just called C states, but the hardware will control everything else. Now, if you set a profile, Everything else the hardware does, like uncore frequency scaling, CPU link management, um, PCIe, uh, ASPM, for example. So there's many other settings that might have different defaults than at the max performance policy. And this is where many customers had, I'd say, interactions with power management that said, hey, it doesn't perform the same than it did with max performance because they choose a profile that set OS control, but some of the other subsetting that were different from what ESXi could control were also different than from the max performance one. So that's why when people ask, hey, what's the optimal performance bias profile? Give it to me for every single vendor there is. I'm saying there's a simple process to follow, right? It depends on what you're currently on, but there's a simple process to follow to have that max performance yet ESXi full control. Right now, if you're on a dynamic or a low power profile, you don't wanna put that custom profile in place. You don't wanna go and just enable P states, deep C states, and um, because you also end up with all of the other settings that are different from max performance. So don't do that. What you want to do is you want to set it to max performance first. If you have it on max performance already, that's fine. But you want to use that as a base. And now you allow ESXi in a custom profile, P state access and deep C states. And depending on the vendor, um, you might have to select there. You want to put in package C6 retention, for example. 
Now you have full control using your SIGSI. And for people that tell me I don't change my slides, I actually do. <laughs> now, this is hopefully a very quick run through on what the steps are. Um, I also wrote a quick blog article on where I give examples for different vendors just to be even more precise, but the principle stays the same. You want to end up with the great baseline that is max performance, but you want to be able to retain control using ESXi. The goal here is if you choose high performance in ESXi, it has the exact same performance than you would have um, when you use max performance in the BIOS. That's the ultimate goal here. Yeah, I think you really bring up one of the key points is that the settings are named very similar things between the BIOS and ESX, and you very do the great job of clarifying some kind of some what are the differences really are and how you can be smart about uh, choosing the right settings and getting a good blend uh, to get the best performance while still having some control over the power by uh, letting ESX I have control over the things. With when it comes to trying to be more efficient trying to be more sustainable or under whichever umbrella you want to put it. Um, I like to tippy toe towards that problem. Yes, your workload, there is a high chance that it works just fine if you just go with whatever OS control profile the BIOS had. Big chance you won't even notice it. But the couple of applications that would notice it are usually fairly critical to the business. So what my recommendation is to very slowly approach that. If you're perfectly happy with the no risk HPM setting, you could go a step beyond that and maybe allow for encore frequency scaling. You probably won't notice a difference, but if you do, you know, you can fall back to that no HPM, uh, that no risk HPM setting um, to be always in the position of having 100% control and achieve maximum performance while retaining the option to be a little bit more energy efficient. Well, we both know that power consumption in the data center is a huge, huge issue that all data center managers have to uh, tackle. So, so being able to uh, to kind of digest the, the information you've just given us, I think can help people to be a bit more power efficient in their data centers and um, achieve their goals. We have many customers that are currently getting to the limits of what the data center can deliver, what their grid can deliver. And because of so many infrastructures out there are oversized to such a large degree, right? And that makes them especially good for power management because power management uh, will conserve most power at low utilization. Hi, Valentin. So thanks for joining us. I think this has been really uh, informative and helpful. And to everybody else, I hope to see you again on another episode of the Extreme Performance Series soon. Thanks for having me. Bye. Thanks.